Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a Kickstarter preview. This one is for Catacombs Cubes from Elzra. This is a one to four player game, at least in its base mode, where you're gonna be drafting dice, collecting resources in the way of these wooden cubes and different sorts of Tetris-like shapes, using those cubes to build structures and then ultimately communally building a big city. Yeah, it also has an aspect of dexterity because as you build these, you're gonna be placing them in your construction yard and building them as you go, trying to match shapes with the actual buildings themselves. Each of these buildings is gonna give you a number of victory points, plus possibly some bonuses once they're built. Yeah, we have a four player game set up right here. And as you can see on the board, we have those cubes I was talking about in six different varieties. We have the dice here. They're gonna be rolled if you use the dice at the beginning of each round. And then you've got this board right here, which is the main board. Along this top, you're going to see the village tiles. These are gonna be the main tiles that you're gonna be building throughout the game and, and adding to the main city that you're gonna build right here from Town Hall. Across the bottom of the board, you're gonna have two different palaces that can also be communally built throughout the game. Contributing to this particular palace is going to allow you to go up this track, gaining victory points and bonuses in the form of obsidian in order to build future buildings into that tableau as well. Yeah, and at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a couple things as well. Everyone's going to get a residence tile. There's a few residence tiles in the game. Everyone's going to be randomly dealt one of these. This is their own personal building that they're going to want to build. Just like the rest of the villages, you're going to be able to build that out there, but this will have some special rules along with it, as well as these three coins. Everyone's going to get a red, a blue, and a silver coin. These have a few different powers that we'll talk about when we get a little more into the gameplay. You can also play with the board flipped to its opposite side. If you choose not to play with the coins, you can play with a side that is personal to you. This is going to allow you to start with one of those different cubes on your player board, but have no coins in order to spend. Again, those coins are going to be important in order to kind of change your abilities during the round. Yeah, and before we get into the structure of how the game plays, I want to talk about two different ways that you can play this in a couple of different ways. One, you can use those dice like I'd mentioned. The beginning of every round, the foreman or kind of like the first player is going to roll those dice to determine what columns and what types of resources can be drafted. Alternatively, you can use these tiles here. This is a little bit more informative because you're not going to just randomly be rolling dice. There's going to be a pile of these tiles face down and the foreman's going to fill those same spots along with one face down that only the foreman knows before things get drafted. Once the dice are rolled, they're going to be placed in one of the four different columns according to the color of the dice. These are going to determine what can be drafted because as you take these dice, you're going to be picking from one of the four different columns. But before you're allowed to draft any of those dice, the foreman is allowed to actually make some changes. Yeah, the foreman is actually, when you're rolling dice, able to take any two of the dice from two different columns and move them around so that maybe they suit their particular needs or maybe not giving another player what they want. The dice themselves are going to have symbols on them that reflect what you're able to do during that turn. Typically, they're all going to reflect one of the different types of resources. And when you take those dice, you're simply going to remove them from the board and then take those resources into your construction yard. However, there's some other types of dice that you can also draft. Yeah, there are three unique faces on a number of the different dice. We'll cover those really quickly. One of them is going to allow you to contribute an obsidian, which is the small black cube, to the current palace. The interesting thing here is you're going to be taking that obsidian from the general supply, not from your own player board. There's another face that allows you to sort of deconstruct one of the cubes that you have either in your construction zone or your warehouse, which are the two places on your player board where you can store cubes. When you do this, you're going to take the cube like this and reduce it by one. So this is four cubes effectively in terms of its shape. I can take any three cube shape from the board. And the final facing on the die allows you to take any one of the six possible resources and add it to your construction yard. Now, when it's your turn, you're not necessarily drafting dice. You're making a decision. Do I wish to draft two of those dice in one of those columns, or do I wish to build? And it's up to you in which of those two actions you wish to take, but you can only take one. If you choose to build, you have some options. Number one, you can build your personal residence by building this actually on your construction yard with the different resources that you have. If you choose not to build this, you could also build one of the four possible common tiles into the board itself. Yeah, so let's talk about these tiles for a second. I have both of them right here. We'll talk about the villages, but they're both pretty similar. What you're gonna see here is an isometric picture of what you're trying to build with your cubes. Again, you can build them with any combination of cubes as long as it looks like this, 
as long as you can build it and then take your hands off mm -hmm. of it and it doesn't fall. And there's even a diagram in the upper left-hand corner that shows the top-down perspective of the structure as well if you have trouble with the isometric view. And then finally, in the upper right-hand corner of the tile, you're going to have the victory points awarded as well as a potential bonus that you might take from the tile. Now, let's talk about what happens once you build the tile. The tile is going to be placed in one of the locations around the board. It has to be placed orthogonal to a pre-existing tile that already exists. Now, there's a couple things that happen. In a four-player game, this has to remain a four by five. So once a five has been reached on either the length or the width of that particular town, you can't build past that. And that's very important for future tile placements. The second thing you have to pay attention to are the connectors between these different locations. If the connectors match, you get both of the connector bonuses. If they don't match, you have to pick one or the other. And these come in the form of free obsidian or some of the coins that you can use to enhance your abilities. Now, when you build your residence, it works a little bit different. Yeah, the residence tile is very similar to all the other tiles with one significant difference. You're going to take this little house that you have in your player color and place it in the upper corner of that tile. From that point forward, when any other player builds a tile adjacent to that tile, that player is allowed to take any one of the six resources. Now, there's some other things that can happen during your turn, and that is contributing to the palaces themselves. Each of these palaces work very similar to the tiles that you're building. They all have structures and they all have ways they need to be built. And this can be contributed to in one of two different ways. One, with the coins that you have. One of the coins here, the red coin allows you to take one of your tiles and build it into the structure, gaining points points is in movement across the board according to the actual resource that you use. So if I was able to use a four resource, I can move four spaces. Now, moving along this palace track is going to give you victory points plus free obsidian to use on future turns, but you have to match what it looks like in this area, and everyone is communally building on this particular palace. Right, and once the first palace is built, those cubes are going to stay out there, so it's going to reduce the amount of resources in the game and then the second palace can be built. One thing we didn't mention is when you're building out into the city here, you're going to use cubes in your construction zone and in your warehouse. These are two different parts of your player board. The important thing to remember is that you're going to lose all of the cubes in your construction zone after you build it, whether or not you use those cubes or not. The warehouse, which is the upper portion of your player board, that's where you're going to store cubes where they're safe. So after you've built anything that was in your warehouse after you built, can stay there. Let's talk about those three coins because one of the things pertains very specifically to the warehouse. We already spoke about the red coin which allows you to on your turn contribute one of those resources that you have to the palace. The gray one is going to allow you to before you take your action and before you build to take any one of your resources and place it up into your warehouse meaning that you won't have to lose it if it's not used when building that tile and the final one is the blue coin yeah the blue coin is going to be a lot like one of those die faces that we already talked about you're going to be able to deconstruct a resource that you have but this time when you do so you don't lose that extra chunk that you've lost before. You get to take that in the form of one obsidian as well. And before we begin into the monuments expansion, let's talk about how the game is going to end and how you're going to gain victory points. Of course, you're going to gain victory points throughout the game for building these tiles. Each tile that you build is going to gain you victory points. However, the game ends once you have that four by five structure built onto this main town area, and that's for a four player game. Then you're going to add up any extra victory points, and extra victory points come in the form of those coins. You're going to be using those coins to the game in order to enhance those abilities. However, you can keep some of them back because at the end of the game, you're going to flip all those over to see what people have hidden. These coins are double-sided, so no one really knows what you have at any given point. The person with the most in each of these three different types is going to gain five points. Second place is going to gain three points, and third place is going to gain one point. So holding on to some of these is going to give you some victory points at the end of the game. Yeah, like Jeremy said, those coins are a really interesting aspect of this game. They can be used in any of the three ways we described, but you're really going to be tempted to use them because there are even three more ways you can use them. If you use them face down as just standard coins, there's a few different things you can do, including trading a couple resources for any other one resource, just outright buying any one of the resources, 
or potentially paying off the foreman in order to do some of the switching of the dice. Now you may be asking why are there some blank spaces on the board? That's because there is an expansion called Monuments and there's some areas here and an area down here that's going to house some of those monument pieces. Yeah, in fact, the first thing that the Monuments expansion does is add the potential for a fifth and a sixth player, which is going to bring more dice, which of course also come in the Mon Monument expansion. This space right here is for the Monuments. The Monuments are going to be yet another type of tile that can be added to the game, yet another thing you can build, as well as parks, in fact. So there's a number of different things that are added in the Monuments expansion that really just broaden the game that much more. Not to mention two new resources, so there's different shapes as well that you're going to be using also to build these different types of tiles. So that is Catacombs Cubes. It's from Elzra. It's not an expansion to the real original Catacombs, nope. which is a dexterity game. However, this does have some dexterity in it as you yeah. build those particular tiles. If you have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and everything else that we do, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.